I am uh, Dr. Eduku Jesse George. I'm from Ivory Coast. I am a consultant. I have also worked for a while with the African Union, and it's my pleasure to see you back in this assembly today to present our work. Uh, just has been, a, as a Dr. Bass has uh, said, it was uh, begun last year when uh, it was. Uh, prepared for our meeting, ECTAD meeting in Tanzania. So I'll make a comment also on this uh, presentation on what is seen as the river in Africa, in West and Central Africa. After the brilliant presentation on the value chains by Dion, and uh, where which was really the scientific base uh, on which uh, we base our studies on value chains. So we are also going to do our presentation to show, you know, give us a photographic uh, uh, show on how uh, in West and Central Africa is going on. So that will also allow us to have the look at the strong and the weak points in this chain and to know which elements on which we can anchor ourselves so that we can overcome the weaknesses that also allow us to fight better you know these animal diseases so globally we need to say that in west africa and in central africa the, is, is, it's mainly the small holders who are touched by it. So it's about 80% of production comes from the small scale uh, breeders in the rural zones. And the activity is uh, a subsistence activity, semi-commercial sometimes, which uh, allows uh, the breeders to be able to gain some revenue uh, occasionally, but uh, it is uh, basically a subsistence activity. And uh, we see it more in the urban and peri-urban zones. Now, the pork breeding or pig breeding is also done alongside the agricultural activities, uh, also um, other agricultural activities. So it is rarely a standalone uh, activity really combined with others. So this uh, contributes in a very significant way to uh, empowering uh, women, the youth, and other groups. Uh, they are also retired people who also come together. So they come up with these type of activities to be able to generate a supplementary income for themselves. The value chains that uh, we are talking about also talks about the production. They are intermediary. We have the commercial enterprise transporters, and uh, also we have the whole chain up to the time, you know, there is, uh, we talk about domestic consumer consumption. So that for those who practice any of these activities, they are able to take their children to school, pay medical fees, uh, buy fertilizers to also pay back debts, and also to organize uh, cultural uh, ceremonies, you know, they are linked to marriage, deaths, uh, and in general, so pigs are considered, you know, a kind of living bank where funds may come from, can be mobilized from to be able to meet one's uh, obligations. Sometimes uh, we have exchanges that are done uh, using a local currency or other goods uh, at local levels. So like in West Africa, as well as in Central Africa, there most of the countries that are there are uh, uh, net importers of pork and pork products. So that has to do with production. When it comes to commercialization, 
So the sale is mainly done in a local markets, and those who also know the zones as in Benin, Togo, and also in the Democratic Republic of Congo, we have uh, weekly markets where the products will be presented there, at the, you know, at the points of sale. So that is where the inspection, the pre anti, uh, and the post mortem tests will be done. And uh, they also have the slaughterhouses that are officially known and run by the various government or designated officials. So the markets mainly deal with living animals. So they are the primary markets. So sometimes we have uh, intermediary agents who are able to, you know, the go-betweens who come in between the sellers and the buyers. We also have the secondary markets, uh, which uh, we also have the endpoint markets. Uh, these uh, where could, uh, we can get just coming from hundreds of uh, meters and uh, the markets are also quite big. So in general, we have the buyers who are, uh, who they are the ones who really impose the prices uh, of the animals and uh, they are held in high esteem and uh, really, really are opposed. So there are many factors that can change quickly. We know that during the, when we find like uh, NDR festivities, the price of pork will rise. And uh, sometimes we you know the offer being what it is, the demand goes up. So it also creates uh, uh, certain dynamics that will play along. And uh, on the opposite hand, we also have other periods in the, year where these animals are uh, the population is quite high on the market maybe the breeders are looking for school fees for their children and uh, when we have uh, any of uh, at that time if we have any of the diseases then it would actually be able to touch quite a large number of the animals and then we see their population uh, diminishing quite fast so here we have a schematic representation of all the main actors or the main elements of what we call the elements of the value chain. So all these elements or uh, factors particip participate in the proposal and the transformation of a pork or uh, other products. And... Uh, maybe you know as opposed to other a processed meat that is presented to the consumers and at each step of this uh, a chain uh, or value chain evidently there acti are different activities that take place and which also have a very important impact uh, and uh, also the when you talk about the value of the product and the so talking about uh, capital impact importance on the management of risks such as uh, um, illnesses that may touch uh, on the, the pork. So we find that there are many people who are employed and there is a bit of diversity in the intervations and also to also help mitigate risks with the especially health risks uh, and all that has to do with uh, We went into detail, so when we look at the factors uh, of production, but I'd like to present to you uh, the graphic uh, factors uh, to do with the region that we are talking about, that is uh, West and Central uh, Africa, and the total of animals that are bred in this uh, zone, so Nigeria being the biggest country, uh, which also has a very high population, more than 8 million. So we are followed by Burkina Faso, Cameroon, and all the rest. Now, all these two regions put together bring about 45% uh, of uh, the 
So we are talking about uh, 3 million. So we are talking about it, you know, of the global population. So the elements that comes uh, into this composition of the factors uh, of production, we have all that have uh, to do with the conditions of breeding, nutrition. We have uh, the health of the animals and all these uh, uh, elements brought in together, they would allow us to determine what kind of breeding we have. So like we think we have in our subregion, we can have uh, what kind of uh, breeding is on, could be, is it mainly with a commercial objective is it uh, that they are going to be all that is uh, bread is sold? So we can also have intensive, which also gives us other perspectives. So we also have the products uh, that uh, come in. We have, uh, we have the adult, the ones that are bred up to adult age or size. Then there are others uh, that uh, go for slaughter much earlier. And then they have other products or affiliated products that also come from other regions. We also have uh, the other needs of the, the expertise also that the breeders also need guards, which also allow how that, that are also used in these production activities. The production systems uh, you know, that allow for the integration of different factors of production, there is what we call extensive breeding. We have animals that are, we are talking of local animals in general or uh, mixed breeds. So we also have the production of the non, uh, you know, post breeds. So we have all these types of animals that are presented and uh, which have a lower level or capacity to reproduce or produce. So there is a weak integration of that. So we also have the wild uh, sort of kind of breed. They are spread out in the open, in the fields, around the villages. They go feeding around on all of the waste that has been thrown around. So this is quite common in the rural areas and on the peripheries of or around the towns and uh, where you find the owners do not have quite a lot in terms of investment. Are, who are simply unwilling to invest more to breed these animals. So we have a higher mortality rate. There is also a lower uh, growth uh, uh, so that uh, because they are coming, uh, the level of conversion to uh, food products is also much lower. So there's also a weaker level of exploitation because the reproduction alone that is not so not controlled. So these are some of the aspects that are very important that we need to take into account when we are talking about uh, the fight uh, or the war against uh, uh, or the illnesses or the that uh, diseases that may affect uh, pigs. So, and also allow for certain systems to be uh, made more durable. So here are some uh, images of um, breeding. You can see the space that is uh, available is actually between buildings that in this space, maybe once in a time, we are also going to distribute, you know, bring in some feed to uh, complement uh, what the animals have been able to find in the world. And this also allows to also protect and keep the animals safer during the night. There are times when uh, the area is not well, uh, you know, uh, conditioned for pig breeding. 
uh, where the animals can also be shelter, sheltered from the natural uh, elements. When it comes to uh, semi-intensive breeding, uh, we noticed that there is some uh, improvement of the genetic uh, qualities uh, for the animals that were uh, bred in certain uh, regions of Africa, like I can give an example of uh, Rasporogo in uh, Cote d'Ivoire, which is a hybrid of the local and the imported uh, variety. So these are the kind of animals that um, we find in Burkina and also in Guinea. There are also other pork races that uh, in uh, found in Benin. So these are hybrids. And uh, that this kind of intermediary gives uh, to come up with very interesting results. So there are other things that come in when we are talking about, uh, you know, areas to keep the animals, the veterinary services that may be available. So where we have uh, only available space is put into use for, gen for general use. And usually the markets are not too far away. They tend, and this is where we find the huge uh, consumption as uh, centers. So the returns are fairly okay, but they rarely hit the optimal uh, limits. So this kind uh, of uh, system, uh, this system can evolve uh, to intensive kind of breeding as we will see. So here we have uh, buildings that uh, allow for semi-intensive breeding. Uh, there is an effort to improve on the general environment and the animals are allowed to produce sufficiently to also balance uh, between um, these uh, to ensure that this kind of activity is also uh, beneficial. And then after that, we have the intensive system where effective you have a genetic improvement. The animals uh, are imported from Europe usually or generally, then uh, we have the different races. You know, you're talking about the quality, the, that they are also uh, support uh, in terms of uh, from the government and uh, the, the investment is quite high and uh, there is integration vertical integration also there is also at the level of the death rate is low, quite low because there is a quite uh, intensive follow-up and care uh, once these uh, the animals are imported from europe they are able to gain uh, taken care of and they gain weight well before they are taken to the market and productivity or reproduction is also quite high and uh, there is uh, all that is done to improve on the quality of uh, these uh, animals to facilitate intensive breeding and uh, in general uh, access uh, is uh, is uh, usually, like we said, uh, supported by the government. So here is one of one of the buildings where there is intensive breeding, and they develop more and more. And uh, they are also called upon to help improve on uh, what is available and uh, in terms of production and uh, another uh, sub-Sahara and uh, the, the risk of, of having uh, the illnesses here is much less because there is more control in this kind of uh, uh, building. 
So there is more stability that we have uh, automatic uh, distribution even of uh, medication and other needs that the uh, pigs uh, would have. So this is the level of exploitation that uh, we, you know, most uh, groups are looking at. When we look at the commercialization or even the market for these animals, so they are organized markets here. We are talking about markets that are in the hands of the animal breeders who go looking for animals everywhere, uh, all over in the country. And sometimes they even go across borders as they are looking for these animals, especially when there was uh, the to they go looking for the animals. Uh, so they come from uh, all over. There is a mix. So and in these areas where we have a lot of animals, there is a high risk of contamination. For example, those who buy those animals so that they can uh, take them into their uh, businesses in their farms really uh, run the risk of uh, carrying along with them the diseases. So this is a very uh, complex thing. As you can see, there is no water. There is, uh, so the animals are uh, suffering in the market areas. So this is the kind of market in the evening when the animals have been taken back uh, to, I mean, uh, have been uh, brought to these uh, installations as they wait to uh, go to the market uh, for sale. So this is also another possibility of transmission of diseases so you notice that uh, uh, the animals will have come from different areas and from different uh, conditions and therefore risk of contamination is also high. As you can see, uh, there is also a temporary uh, circulation of uh, movement of the animals. So the installations, as you can see the, uh, them here are very uh, temporary. And this is also a privileged area for cross-contamination of animal diseases. This is also another aspect of this kind of uh, animal concentration where we see the abattoir um, near the animal closure. So you can see even the pigs themselves have access to the uh, abattoir and this is uh, a risk of contamination of the live animals in the abattoir and therefore infections are possible so as long as uh, the animals are still in the uh, um, involved in the transport, the risk might be minimal when they are moving on their own, but once they get into the market, then we have very high risk because they might be taken elsewhere and mixed with other animals. So this is, uh, these are the conditions of the uh, slaughterhouses. Um, normally, these are the conditions you can see, generally speaking, but you can see that there are no uh, hygiene conditions are being respected. As you can see, animals, uh, slaughtered animals are not supposed to be uh, uh, put on the ground, as you can see, uh, straight on the floor. They are supposed to be hanged. And uh, these kind of conditions uh, really uh, require to be improved in, the, in our abattoirs. So all these 
issues uh, you know all day uh, you know uh, water from these abattoirs go to uh, the uh, you know a drainage and therefore uh, contamination again can move along the drainage uh, so you can see all the business people also come in uh, with their shoes on uh, and you can see the meat uh, the uh, slaughtered pigs uh, are on the floor so that is also another risk of contamination so these are um, business people uh, who have access to uh, these uh, um, uh, slaughterhouses so here are some of some uh, images from uh, uh, slaughter houses uh, you know you have all the uh, some kidneys for example uh, from slaughtered animals and uh, you can see there is some evidence of uh, the asf disease and you can see here uh, uh, the contamination, contaminated uh, blood uh, that is uh, uh, all over. Mm. So easily this contamination can now be transferred to uh, other uh, human beings and animals. So no particular measure exists to protect or in, uh, prevent contamination uh, from the slaughterhouses and processing houses. So I can see you have similar uh, pictures here showing similar conditions. Here also we are in a uh, slaughter house again animals are on the uh, floor and in very deplorable conditions and despite the inspection inspection that is being undertaken but uh, the conditions are very deplorable and then you also have some uh, drainage uh, uh, juxtaposed which will mean that uh, all the effluents from the abattoir will go into the uh, rivers and when you see people uh, who go to the river to uh, fetch water they might easily might easily uh, get contaminated as well so as you can see here again this is a picture near the uh, market and the abattoirs so uh, whatever remains is thrown here and uh, this is a source of uh, contamination again for the uh, animals that you know uh, loiter around with regard to the tr uh, processing we have seen uh, uh, all what is uh, not right then we have the professional organizations as well in certain regions especially here in nigeria uh, lagos is well organized in uh, Ikun state where the producers uh, are well organized to have some control points uh, from uh, on the uh, from the um, slaughterhouses all the way to the uh, consumption so we have people in uh, 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 some initiatives in Cote d'Ivoire and Benin as well so such kind of initiatives have been taken uh, to uh, organize uh, producers in order to improve um, the slaughtering of these animals by avoiding uh, more and more problems and risk of uh, contamination in the value chain. In terms of promotion, improve visibility of uh, 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 pork consumption. Those are initiatives uh, of these uh, 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 pig farmers. So, for example, these are you know uh, posters to uh, promote uh, uh, pork consumption. So, you also have here some uh, T-shirts 
you know, uh, that are conveying some messages to um, attract peop the population to consume pork. These are uh, festive uh, festivities organized to invite people to come and uh, taste pig meat or pork. And these are activities that are being organized more and more in Cote d'Ivoire, for example. I know there is the uh, pork day in Cote d'Ivoire where people are invited to go and enjoy uh, pork delicacies. And uh, this is all initiatives by the operators of the sector producers as well as sellers and uh, uh, business people. With regard to West Africa, we have Central Africa. This uh, in the last 20, uh, two decades, uh, ASF has, uh, uh, you know, ravaged the area. All these countries have uh, practically been uh, contaminated by this disease, whereas the area or the zone had been, uh, you know, saved in the uh, 80s from these, had been spared by this disease in the 80s. Uh, West Africa, uh, Central Africa, this situation uh, is impeding uh, um, some uh, advances, but several initiatives actually have been undertaken in order to improve the conditions uh, of the uh, value chain in the uh, area. So the list of countries that have been contaminated since uh, then have been indicated on this map, as you can see. But the situation is still uh, endemic in the area. It is currently difficult to uh, really uh, get out of, out of it. And that is why we're here to find some solutions. Then, uh, propagation of the SEF, as we have already observed, all the uh, areas that are endemic of SEF have been developed through the uh, Great Road uh, access. So when SEF is identified, uh, sorry, uh, the, we notice that uh, you know uh, business people go further and further to look for uh, pig products, and therefore the d disease uh, finally uh, followed the um, big highways uh, as these animals are being transported from further and further areas or far flank areas. For the case of Nigeria, where the disease uh, came through the Benin border, you can see it on the map, that disease finally uh, spread slowly but surely towards the eastern part of the country uh, by uh, crossing through Lagos first and then moving further to the center of the country and then it went all the way to Abuja, the center of the country. And then as you follow, but now all that uh, following the uh, major highways, uh, which of course uh, the business people uh, use as they uh, take their animals to the market in the region. As we can see, this uh, uh, human behavior that favor the uh, 
operation and maintenance of SEF. Uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, buying of uh, pork uh, in, without, uh, you know, uh, taking care, you know, supplying uh, inconsiderate uh, supply of food, uh, animal feed, and the interactions with the feed and the animal non-tested you know, the water from the rivers and the wells and so on and so forth you know uh, placement of abattoirs in um, you know of pig uh, rearing areas we also have a sharing of product within the or the inputs within the agricultural communities visitors and all the business people who uh, uh, come into the different areas to do their or to carry out their activities and then there is also uh, poor biosecurity at the community level all these are elements that contribute to propagate SEF in the sub-region. I think this image of uh, SEF uh, scorecard in Central and Western Africa uh, shows us, generally speaking, uh, what are the challenges that we're facing, what we need to do, and uh, based on the uh, uh, science of the value chain we need we know now what we need to do in order to ensure that we uh, that this uh, domain works as expected and uh, uh, help uh, develop the uh, countries so this is what i wanted to share with you with regard to the uh, SCF, uh, ASF uh, situation in Central and West Africa.